In this video, we're going to learn everything there is to know in order to edit your first video in Premiere Pro. I know it's going to be overwhelming and daunting, so I really hope that this video is going to help make life easier for you. It has become a little bit of a tradition on this channel to do these in 15 minutes. So let's add a timer to the screen and let's get going. All right, first things first, we need to create a new project. So let's click on the button right here and then fill in the basics, such as the project name, where you wanna save the project and you can choose a project template. For now, I'm gonna set this to none because I want you to see what Premiere Pro looks like by default, but I will show you a project template that I always use for my edits later in the video. Before we hit create, you can see that I have the skip import mode checked. Now, if I uncheck it and then hit create, it'll bring me to the import mode. Here we can select the files that we wanna import, but I am personally not the biggest fan of that workflow. So I would just like to keep things easy and therefore leave the skip import mode checked. Welcome to Premiere Pro. I hope you're gonna enjoy your time here. Now, this looks very underwhelming and very uninteresting. So let's quickly go through what we're looking at. To make sure that you and I are looking at the same layout, we wanna go to workspaces and then click on the editing workspace. Now, if it still looks different than mine, what you wanna do is you wanna go back to workspaces and then click on reset to saved layout. These workspaces are fully customizable. So before I get started, I always like to resize the windows. Now this window right here, this is your project folder, which is called a bin in Premiere Pro. This is where you will import as well as store all of your files. And since we didn't choose a template, this bin is completely empty and we're gonna build it from scratch. Now, if you already have a pre-existing folder structure on your computer, you can now drop all of these folders into your project bin. If you only have a file or a few files that you wanna import, you can double click on that window to open up the finder and import them that way. I would highly recommend you to keep your project as organized as possible. So for that, you can create folders, which are also known as bins. In order to create a bin, we can click on the bin icon right here, and then you can drag and drop your files in there. Right above it, we have the source monitor. Now a clip or any of the assets that you have in your project bin are considered sources. So what we can do is we can double click on a clip and it will open up in the source monitor. Now on the right, we have our timeline. Now this is where we will see our timeline and where we will make our edits. And in Premiere Pro, this is known as a sequence. In order to create a sequence, we can do a few things. Since we already have imported our main clip, we can right click on it and then click on create a sequence from clip. This will create a sequence that matches the settings of your clip, such as the frame rate or the aspect ratio. What we can also do is we can create our own sequence. And in order to do that, we're gonna go to new item and then click on sequence. This window will pop up where we can choose any of the sequence presets, which is something that I always do. And if you wanna change anything again, such as the frame rate or the aspect ratio, you can go into the settings tab and change it there. Since we have now manually created a sequence, we still need to drag our main clip onto the timeline. And now what you will see is that the window above it will reflect what is on the timeline. And this is our project monitor. So as you can see, these two are linked and then these two are linked. Next to the project monitor on the right, we have a brand new properties panel. If we click on the clip on the timeline, it'll show the properties or the controls of that specific clip. For example, if the clip that we dropped on the timeline does not fit the screen, we can click on the fill button right here. Now, if you want to resize your clip or you just want a little bit more control, you can use the skill property in the properties panel to do so. You can then go ahead and reposition the video by changing the position values. If you prefer something a little bit more tangible versus these values, what you can do is you can actually reposition and resize by clicking on this button right here. We can now grab any of the dots to easily resize our clip. The properties panel is actually quite intuitive because it changes depending on the asset that we have selected. So if we have a music track, it'll show different properties than when we have selected a video clip, for example. But once we've built out our timeline a little bit more, we're gonna see that. So let's just park this for now. Now that we know what a default project looks like in Premiere Pro, let's quickly talk about project templates because now you don't need to build your own projects from scratch every single time you start a new project. Premiere Pro comes with a few default project templates depending on what you're working on. For example, I believe they have one for TikTok. Now you can also create your own project template, which is something that I have done. So let me just quickly show you what that looks like. The template that I've created for myself comes with a bunch of bins such as video. And then inside that video bin, we can also see a bin for a 
roll b-roll screen recording highly recommend to keep your projects organized then there's also pre-made sequences such as the 4k 16 by 9 at 24 frames per second or 25 frames per second but the real magic is inside these sequences because if i would open up any of these sequences you will see placeholders telling you exactly where to put what asset obviously you're going to be deleting the placeholders and when you do and you forget where to put what you can just open up any of the tracks by double clicking on it and they are all named if this looks helpful to you and this is something that you want to try i have put a download link in my description so i would recommend you to check that out it'll also come with a folder structure for your computer so you can keep all of your clips music etc per video nicely organized Let's get to the fun stuff. We're going to start editing and we're going to keep this very basic. First, you can zoom in and out on the timeline by pressing the plus and the minus key on your keyboard. Now, everything above this line is your video area and everything below it is your audio area. As you can see right now, the video and audio tracks are quite small. So for comfort, I would recommend making them bigger. And like I already said, we can make them bigger by double clicking on them. If you want them even bigger, you can just drag them up or down. This will really help because you can cut your video is more accurately as the waveform is easier to read and this way you can also more easily navigate the timeline because you can see all of the thumbnails better in order to cut a clip we need to enable the razor tool and the razor tool we can find in the toolbar right here we can click on it or we can press c on our keyboard then click where you want to cut and voila to get our cursor back, we're pressing V on our keyboard. And if you want to level up straight away, press Ctrl K or Command K to make a cut where your playhead is at. Now, in order to get rid of this nothingness, we want to delete it, but we're not just going to hit delete. We're going to hit shift delete. Now shift delete is ripple delete. And what this does is two things. Whereas if you would delete it, you would just delete that nothingness and the clips will remain in the same position. If you hit ripple delete, you will not only delete that part that we want to delete, but you also move your clips together. So you don't end up with any gaps on your timeline. If you want to trim the beginning or the end of the clip, we can just hover over the edge until you see the cursor turn into this icon. Now we can grab the edge and we can move it to where we want it to be. Now, if you accidentally make a cut, which happens to me all the time, what you can do is just select that cut and then hit delete to glue things back together. For the sake of time, I have now edited the main clip. So let's add some B-roll. Let's go back to your project bin and either import our B-roll clips if you haven't done that already, or just find them in the designated folder. Cause again, organization is key. When it comes to B-roll, chances are that you do not want to use the entire clip from start to finish. You probably want to use a part of that clip. So let's double click on that clip to open it up in the source monitor. And here we can create our start and our end point. We're going to grab the playhead and scrub through the clip to find our start point, which in Premiere Pro is known as your in point. And to create our start point, we're going to hit I from in on our keyboard. Then we'll do the same for our end point, which is called an out point in Premiere Pro. And we're going to do this by pressing O. Correct. Now we have a couple of options. We can either import the video and the audio part of the clip onto our timeline, or maybe we just want the video or maybe just the audio. If you want both, just grab that screen and pop it on the timeline. But if you only want the video, which is usually the case when it comes to B-roll, we can use this button right here. Now this is the video only button and this is the audio only button. So in order to select only the video of our selection, we're going to grab that button and then bring that to the timeline. If we keep our eyes on the properties panel for a second, we can also see that at the bottom, there is this button to adjust the speed of a clip. So let's say that this clip is shot in 50 frames per second. That means that we can slow it down by 50%. So we can just type in 50, hit OK, and now our clip has been slowed down. The controls or the properties in the properties panel are all quite basic. What if we want to add an effect that is not on there? In order to add another effect, we can open up the effects panel. We'll have to go back to our project bin. Here we will see a header that says, effects. This is where we can find audio effects, audio transitions, video effects, and video transitions all nicely organized in bins. There are honestly too many effects to go over. And let's be honest, 90% of those effects are going to be irrelevant for you anyway, because it all depends on what kind of video you're editing. But there are some must know effects and those include the warp stabilizer to stabilize your footage, the horizontal flip and the Gaussian blur effects. So since we already know what we're looking for, we're going to type in blur and then you will get all of the blur effects available. Let's grab that and drop that on our clip. Cool, so nothing happened and I also don't see it in the properties panel. 
Where did this effect go? Well, here's the thing about the properties panel. As the name says, it is there for properties, not for effects. So if we want to see the effect and change the effect, we need to open up the effect controls panel. In the effect controls panel, we will see the exact same properties as in the properties panel, but also the Gaussian blur effect that we just added to our clip. To blur this clip, we need to adjust the value right here by either typing in a number or just dragging it to a value that looks good to us. Let's say that we want this clip to go from blurry to not blurry. We now need to animate it. And in order to animate an effect, we need to create so-called keyframes, which are basically start and end points. To create the first keyframe, our start point, we need to enable the stopwatch. This will create our first keyframe, which looks like this little diamond right here. Then we're going to grab our playhead and we're going to move it to a point where we want the blurriness to end. And in order to create another keyframe, we can either click on the diamond button right here, or we can change the value, set it to zero, and a keyframe will be created automatically. Besides adding effects, we can also add transitions to our video. In order to add a transition, we're going to go back to the effects panel and then open up the video transitions folder. For now, let's add a standard cross dissolve transition. We click on it and we drag and drop that in between the two clips. And then you can just grab either side to shorten or lengthen the transition. Our video looks pretty cool, but we also want it to sound cool. So let's focus on audio for a little bit. Audio editing has become really, really easy in Premiere Pro. And again, we're just sticking to the basics. We're going to open up a new panel in Premiere Pro called the Essential Sound Panel. In order to do this, we can go to Window and then click on Essential Sound, or or we can make it even easier. On our audio file, we will see a symbol. Now in our case, since we're editing dialogue, we will see this little speaker, which means that Premiere Pro has automatically tagged this as dialogue. Let's click on the symbol to open up the essential sound panel. This is what the essential sound panel will look like for dialogue. But if Premiere Pro has accidentally tagged your clip wrongly, just click on the clear audio type button and then select the right tag to get the right controls for your audio file. We're going to make our audio sound better in only two steps. One, we're going to enhance our audio. We're going to click on enhance and then let Premiere Pro do its magic. Once it's done, we can use the slider to fine tune it and make it sound exactly right. Now we've only done this with one clip. So if you wanna do this with all of the clips simultaneously, go back to your timeline, select all of those clips and then click on enhance. And now all of your clips will be enhanced. And since all of these clips are now still selected, what we also wanna do is we wanna match the auto loudness. This makes sure that everything is just leveled out and balanced out so if for example you're vlogging in different locations and your audio levels are different it'll now even out all of the audio levels something that's really missing in this video so far is music i really like to use music because i feel like it makes my videos feel a lot fuller so for that we're going to import a song and then we're going to pop that on the timeline we can lower the volume by grabbing this line right here and then drag it down or we can go back to the essential sound panel now you will see since this is automatically tagged as music that our controls in the essential sound panel have changed. Here we cannot just change the volume but we can also turn on ducking and this means that the volume of a song will be automatically decreased when you're speaking and increased when you're not. You want to make sure that you have selected duck against dialogue and then generate keyframes. If we take a look at our timeline, we can now see that the keyframes have been created. If it's still too loud or it doesn't fade at the speed that you want it to, you can go back into the essential sound panel and just make the adjustments and don't forget to generate your keyframes again. At this point in the video, we have already covered so much that I hope you're feeling more confident in your ability to crush Premiere Pro and edit your first video. Now, maybe you want things to be at a slower pace. Maybe you want more like a workshop vibe, like a full episode where you can follow along step by step. You get the same assets. You can just edit the same thing that I'm editing. If that is something that you're interested in, there will be a link in the description for that. But since this is YouTube, we're going to keep things nice and concise. So let's move on to the next thing. To add text, we can either go back to the toolbar and click on the T button, or we can hit T on our keyboard and then click anywhere on the screen to start typing our text. Now, a few things just happened. Firstly, we will see that a text layer has appeared on our timeline. You will also immediately see that the properties panel has changed again and will now show the relevant controls for your text. Just like with video clips, we can also add effects and transitions to our text layers to make it more dynamic and not as flat and two dimensional. If this is too much work for you or you just cannot get it to look as good as you want it to look, what I would recommend you to do and this is totally free, is to open up the graphics panel because Premiere Pro actually has a lot of built-in free text graphics to save us time. 
As always, we're saving the best for last, color correction and color grading. We've already opened some panels in the editing workspace, so I don't wanna get it even messier and more overwhelming. So instead, we're going to switch workspaces and open up the color workspace. On the right side, we will now see a Lemetri color panel. Now this is where we will find all of the controls and where easier to get a starting point for your adjustments. If we click on it, we can see that now all of the sliders below have changed. Below the auto button, there is a slider that we can use to adjust the intensity of the auto adjustment. Since this is the first video that we're editing in Premiere Pro, I would encourage you to just play around with the slider, see what each of the sliders does. Chances are you just need to adjust the exposure and the contrast and maybe a little bit of the white balance. I have a dedicated video on color correction if you wanna learn more about this. Now, when you're done with your color correction, you will notice that we've only applied it to this one clip. Do we now need to do this every single time for every other clip? No, because what you can do is actually two things. The first thing is we can add an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is a transparent layer that you can put on top of your clips and we can apply the Lumetri color effect to that. First, we're going to select all of our B-roll clips and move it to the track above it. Then we're going back to new item, click on adjustment layer, and then here, just click okay. Let's grab our adjustment layer and put it on a timeline. Now we're going to copy the Lumetri color effect from that clip. We're going to select the adjustment layer and then paste it to the adjustment layer. Now, of course, make sure that you have now deleted it from your original clip and you will see that if we skip through the timeline it has now been applied to all of the clips that are below our adjustment layer what you can also do is you can add it to your source clip remember when we were talking about that the clips in our project bin are considered sources so if we were to go back to the effect controls panel and then open up source right here and paste our lumetri color effect in there it has now been applied to all of the clips that are linked to that source clip this is a very basic approach to color correction and i would highly encourage you to learn how to color correct accurately using scopes. I know these look scary, but I promise you it is actually really easy to learn. And to fulfill that promise, I have actually made a dedicated video on this topic, which I would love for you to check out after this video. It is time for the world to see the beautiful video that we've just created. So let's export our video. We're going to click on the export tab right here. I would just suggest to select any of the presets. They're really good. In case of doubt, you can choose one of the match source presets so you know that it matches the setting of your sequences. Again, if you're interested in a full workshop episode where we really go step by step and we can take the time to really go through Premiere Pro and edit our first video together, then make sure that you check the link in the description. Also down there, you will find a link to the project template that I've showed in this video. And then while you're down there, give your girl a little bit of external validation. Ask a question question then go back up come on keep scrolling and hit subscribe and like and then i'll see you in the next video which could be this one thank you